Welcome to Electrical Circuit Analysis. Throughout this tutorial, I'd request you to keep pen and paper with you and solve the problems as we go along so that you can identify your knowledge gap and also consolidate what you just learned. It often occurs in practice that a particular element in a circuit is variable while other elements are fixed. The variable element is usually called a load. A good example will be a household outlet terminal which may be connected to different appliances at uh, different times. So for example, in this outlet here, you sometimes connect a computer you or a fridge or it could be any other appliance. Each time you connect a new appliance, the resistance changes and the entire circuit has to be reanalyzed all over again. Now to overcome this problem, Stevenson's theorem provides us a technique by which the fixed part of the circuit is replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of just two circuit elements. VTH, the independent voltage source here, is called the Stevenson voltage, and RTH is called the Stevenson resistance. Now, to find the Stevenson equivalent of a circuit, we need to determine uh, these two circuit elements, VTH and RTH. Now, how do we do that? So let's just say we're trying to determine the uh, Stevenson equivalent to the left of the terminal A and B here. So now to compute VTH, we compute the open circuit voltage of the terminal A and B. Now why are we calling this voltage an open circuit voltage? This is because we're trying to determine the Stevenson equivalent here to the left of the terminal A and B. So we're trying to replace this large network, which is located in the left of the terminals A and B. And so we're disconnecting anything that is connected to the right of the terminal A and B. So the open circuit voltage computed thereby is basically the 7 in voltage. So the bottom line is to compute the 7 in voltage, you don't have to touch any other element in the circuit. Just remove anything that is uh, to the that you don't want to repla replace by the Thevenin equivalent. Now, to compute the Thevenin equivalent resistance, we focus on this panel B here. To compute Thevenin resistance RTH, we turn off all the independent sources. Now, by turning off independent sources, I mean replacing all the voltage sources with short circuits and replacing all the current sources with open circuits. And then we compute the equivalent resistance of the terminals A and B. This is our Thevenin resistance. So I'll now illustrate the steps of computing Thevenin equivalent with an example. So here we have to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit of the circuit shown below in the figure to the left of the terminals A and B. So basically we need to replace whatever we elements we see to the left of the terminals A and B with VTH and RTH. So how do we do that? So uh, first we compute VTH and to compute VTH remember uh, we need to determine the dividend equivalent to the left of the terminal C and B so we have to disconnect everything that is there in the right of the terminal to the right of the terminal C and B. So basically the uh, load resistor RL here or the variable resistor RL here. So we disconnect it here and then compute the dividend voltage VTH the open circuit voltage. Now to compute the uh, seven equi equivalent vo circuit voltage VTH, or seven in voltage for short, you can use any uh, circuit analysis technique that you want. You can use KVL, KCL, uh, voltage divider, current divider, nodal analysis, mesh analysis, anything you want. And then you compute VTH, this open circuit voltage, and then you get your VTH value. Once we have computed VTH, we focus on how to compute the Thevenin resistance RTH. Now, in, in order to compute the Thevenin resistance, we replace this independent voltage source with a short circuit, and we replace this independent current source with an open circuit. If we do that, we get this circuit. What we do next is that we compute the equivalent resistance by looking into the terminals A and B here. So here, this four. Ohm and 12 ohm resistors are in parallel. So 
it could it can be replaced by a three ohm resistor, and that three ohm resistor and one ohm resistor here will be in series. So the Thevenin resistance here is four ohms. So this this is the scenario of the circuit after we have replaced uh, the left of the terminals A and B with its Thevenin equivalent. C is the Thevenin equivalent after uh, replacing the circuit with the Thevenin equivalent. The circuit is so much smaller and so much easier to analyze. And whenever the re load resistor here is changed, is changing, you can just apply a voltage divider rule to uh, compute the uh, voltage uh, of this uh, load resistor. So I now want you to pause this video and solve this problem. And then we will uh, check if our answers match. So please pause this video and solve this problem. So hopefully you have got this answer. So again, here we have to compute the Thevenin equivalent to the left of the terminal A and B. So we basically disconnect everything that is to the right of the terminal A and B which is this one ohm resistor and then we compute this voltage VAB here and this VAB here is the Thevenin voltage VTH and once we have computed the Thevenin voltage we replace each of the independent sources uh, we basically turn off each of the independent sources which means replacing the voltage source with a short circuit and then replacing the current source with an open circuit so once we do that we can compute the uh, equivalent resistance to the terminals A and B and that is our Thevenin resistance. So there you have it. Uh, that's how you compute the uh, Thevenin equivalent circuit when there are no dependent sources in the circuit. Now if the circuit has at least one dependent source, additional steps are required to compute the Thevenin resistance. By the way, uh, the Thevenin voltage has to be computed in the exact same manner as I just mentioned. But for Thevenin resistance computation, you need to perform an additional step. So we cannot turn off the dependent sources. So what we do instead is that we uh, turn off the independent sources and connect a known voltage source or a known current source in the terminals A and B. So if we are connecting a known voltage source, let's say a 1 volt voltage source, we will try to compute the current that is coming out of the positive terminal of that voltage source. Now to compute this current, you can use any analysis you want. You can use modal analysis, mesh analysis, KBO, KPO, voltage divider, current divider, whatever you like. So on once you compute I0 here, and you already know V0 because it's a known voltage source, it's usually set like one volt. Then you take the ratio of the voltage and current here and that is your Thevenin resistance. Instead of an independent voltage source you can also connect a known independent current source I0 here. It's usually one ampere. So if you connect a one ampere current source to the terminals A and B here you compute the voltage V0 across the uh, current source so that you can still take the ratio and compute dividend resistance. So now we'll illustrate the steps with an example to consolidate our understanding. But before that, let me summarize everything uh, about uh, dividend resistance, what we have learned so far. So when we're trying to compute the Thevenin equivalent resistance, we need to look into the circuit and check if there is any dependent source. If there, is, if there are no dependent sources, we just turn off the independent sources and then compute the equivalent resistance of the terminal. That's it. And by turning off the independent sources, I mean replacing each of the voltage source with a short circuit and replacing each of the current source with, with an open circuit. Now, if there is at least one dependent source, we need to do an extra step. So we again uh, turn off all the independent sources, but we keep the dependent sources untouched. And we connect 
a one volt independent voltage source or a one ampere independent current source to that terminal and if we have connected a voltage source we measure the current that is going through that voltage source or if instead we have connected a current source we measure the voltage across that current source and take the ratio of the voltage and current of that uh, one volt or one ampere source the ratio is basically our seven and equivalent resistance simple okay let's look at another example to further consolidate our understanding so here we have to find the seven and equivalent of the circuit in the figure at terminals A and B here so we have to uh, replace this uh, big circuit with a seven equivalent so to compute VTH again uh, we basically compute VAB here and to compute RTH we'll look into the circuit and see that okay there is a dependent source here so we can't just turn it off and compute the equivalent resistance so what instead we should do when we're computing the dividend resistance is that we disconnect, we uh, turn off this independent current source, that is we replace it with an open circuit, and then we connect here and one volt voltage source and measure the current that is going through that current source, and then take the ratio of the voltage and current of that source to find the dividend resistance. So to illustrate this, uh, let's solve this problem. So here we're trying to determine, again, the open circuit voltage here. This is the Thévenin voltage. Now, I'd like to uh, reiterate this fact that when we're trying to compute the Thévenin voltage VTH, we don't have to turn off the independent sources. But we need to do this when we're computing the Thévenin resistance RTH. So again, in order to compute this uh, VOC, the open circuit voltage or the Thévenin voltage, you can compute any you can employ any circuit analysis technique you want, load analysis, mesh analysis, etc. And then you can compute this voltage. And then, uh, since there is a dependent source, we keep this dependent source untouched when we're trying to compute the dividend resistance. But uh, notice that we have uh, removed or open circuit of the current source that was uh, located here and we instead we have connected a one volt voltage source to compute the uh, Thévenin equivalent resistance. Now we need to uh, connect the one volt voltage source in the exact same terminal uh, with respect to which you are trying to compute the Thévenin equivalent resistance of. So uh, I'm trying to find the Thévenin equivalent resistance by looking at the terminals A and B in this problem so I'm connecting this known voltage source, that is one volt voltage source in this terminal. So now we again apply any analysis we want, nodal analysis, mesh analysis, whatever, and find the current that is flowing out of the positive terminal of this voltage source. Once we've computed that, we just take the ratio of this voltage, that is one volt, and I naught, and that ratio is basically our terminal resistance. So I'd like to request you to pause this video and solve this problem to further consolidate your understanding. So if you did that, you probably end up with this uh, dividend equivalent circuit. Now here is another practice problem for you to test your knowledge. So please pause this video and try to solve this problem with your hands. Hopefully you have found the Thévenin equivalent resistance VTH here, 5.33 volts, and the Thévenin equivalent uh, resistance uh, 0.44 ohm. And uh, basically, what we did here, uh, what, what we can do here is basically compute this voltage VAB, that is the Thévenin voltage, without altering anything in the circuit. And once we've computed the VTH, we replace this with short circuit and keep this dependent source untouched and connect here a one volt voltage source or a one ampere current source and determine the voltage current ratio of that source to determine the Thévenin resistance 0 0.44 ohms. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Please feel free to uh, post your questions in the comment section and thank you.